now from the makers of Cold Water Omo. It's like a movie situation, isn't it? What are you talking about? Hmm. A tender young girl is alone in an old house. A mysterious stranger calls, May I use your telephone? He asks, she admits him, and then when he walks across to the telephone, he finds, da 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 da, the wires have been cut. What the devil are you raving about? Now look here, make that call and get I out. I can't look. The telephone. Da 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 da. The strange young man who had lifted the receiver replaced it and pulled on the telephone cord. He waved the ends at Mrs. Peel. It had been cut, all right. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. There is no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bowls and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. What's in the wall's ice cream freezer today? I say, wow wafer. Wonder what's inside. Wow, creamy strawberry and vanilla ice stuck together with munchy wafers. Wall's wow wafer. Wow. <laughs> Episode four of this story, in which it is brought home to John Steed that the situation is very serious and that Emma Peel could be in danger of being killed by the Joker. The weekend down at Sir Cavalier Rausikana's country home had started very mysteriously and had become more sinister with every hour that passed. Mrs. Peel, deserted by her host and his ward, had thought of an early night, curled up in her four-poster bed with a pleasant novel, untroubled by the fog which was sweeping across Exmoor and enveloping the old house like a white, damp shroud. Mrs. Peel was not a nervous person. She was too used to unusual situations and well capable of taking care of herself, but she was extremely puzzled by the whole affair. John Steed, on the other hand, was more than puzzled. He was frankly very anxious. He'd phoned George Fancy, who, reliable as ever, had called round. Come in, George, come in. Oh, what's the trouble, Steed? I'm not sure, but someone put this across my stairs. Steed held out the device, which was a steel, retractable trip wire. For the moment I tripped, it broke contact and retracted into the metal base, which was fixed neatly into the corner of the stairs. I was lucky. Could have been far worse than a sprained ankle. Oh, cunning little gadget. Nasty. And you think that... I don't uh, know what to think, but I can't take any chances. If this is Max Prendergast up to his old tricks, then Mrs. Peel may be in more danger than I am. She's down at this place, Rousikana Hall. Uh, did you find out anything about it? Uh, yes, yes, I did. It's near a place called Little Dayton. You got the phone number? Yeah, I have, and I tried it. Thought it would save time. It didn't. Phone is dead. Tried twice. Must be something wrong with the line. They have a very thick fog down there, according to the radio. Hmm. Can't see why that should affect the phones. You sure? Oh, yes, yes, quite sure. Try for yourself if you like, but you won't get through. Uh, I don't think I can let it slide. Uh, neither do I. Another thing. Sir Cavalier Rousey Carner left this country four days ago on a holiday abroad. Officially, that house is empty. Oh, well, that decides it. Little Dayton. That's uh, the other side of Exmoor, isn't it? Yes, yes. It'll take us some time to get there. If we get there, this fog. 
thicker than a pea soup in that area. We may not get through. We've got to get through. Oh, blast this ankle. I think I can drive the car. No, 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 don't worry about that. I'll do it. Come on, I'll give you a hand with your hat and coat. George Fancy walked across to the hall stand. He picked up Steed's thick overcoat and bowler hat. As he did so, a card fluttered to the floor. What the devil is that? <sighs> Plain card. How very odd. Must have been inside your bowler. <laughs> a joker. Well, let me see that. Here. Oh! Well, what's that? What's wrong? I cut myself. Oh, look. There's, there's a razor blade on the back of the card, stuck on with transparent tape, edge just level with the side of the card. Downfall thing for anyone to... to... George? Steve, I... George, what is it? Steve, I... I... George, it... It was meant for you. George! George! George made no reply. He couldn't. He was dead. The fog grew worse. It wrapped around the old house at Little Dayton, pressing white and clammy against the casement windows. Emma Peel watched the strange young man as in the scullery he hunted through the drawers for something with which to repair the telephone connection. Any luck? Nothing. Not even a pair of pliers. Wire and pliers. That's what you need to fix that phone. Oh, I've tried the extension upstairs, too. That's also out of order. Out of order? I wouldn't call cut wires out of order. More likely deliberately disabled. But that's ridiculous. I mean, why and who? You. You're out of your mind. Now, why? To keep me here. Just why would I want to do that? Oh, I've got vitality, charm. You've got an over-vivid imagination. I don't think you're at all vital. And to me, you're utterly devoid of charm. The only thing I find at all interesting about you is your ability to lie. Why did you come here? I told you. Ran out of petrol. This house is a good half a mile off the road. Why come here? I saw the lights. Thought the petrol would just about last out and I'd be able to phone. What lights? There were very few on. You can't see the house from the road in this fog. It would be impossible. <laughs> all right. I knew the house was here. Who were you coming to see? No one. I told you I'm interested in property. It's my business. Stately homes and all that sort of thing. The Baron von Dufy... Is dead. <laughs> so he is. So he is. He's dead. And I'm here. Alone in this great big house with you. I'm not alone. Oh, come on now. You can't tell me there's someone hidden. I shan't be alone for long anyway. Sir Cavalier, the owner of this house, is due back at any moment. In this fog? He'll never make it. No one will. And his ward, Ola, only went to the village. She'll be back soon. Ola. She's dead. Like the Baron Dufy. Dead. I killed her. The strange young man picked up the bloodied knife that was stuck in the table. He flourished it at Mrs. Peel. Take a look in the garden. That's Ula all over. You see, I said I was traveling incognito, didn't I? It's a fact. I'm really Jack the Ripper. Mrs. Peel looked at him calmly and coldly. You could be anybody. I only know one thing. You're a bore. It's late. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. In that case, would you like me to tuck you up? The young man put down the knife and stretched an arm round Mrs. Peel's waist. <laughs> <clears throat> Mistake. No one does that unless I want them to. Come on. <clears throat> Mrs. Peel frog-marched the strange young man out of the scullery, through the kitchen and into the hall. Hey! Hey! <clears throat> now look here! Out! I've had enough of your nonsense. Are you, you really throwing me out? I'm really throwing you out. On a night like this? What's the matter? Baby, are you scared? Out! Uh, look, I... I, I feel safer back here. It, it's dreadful outside. Look at the fog. Mark you, this place is too creepy. You can tell the owner there's not grand enough for my retinue. Ouch! Uh, all right, all right. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, by the way, I take it back about you being alone, I mean. I don't think you are alone in the house. Don't believe me? Then take a look at the dining room. Bye. <laughs> As John Steed drove further into the country, the conditions became worse. He was anxious to get down to Exmoor as quickly as possible, but the fog reduced his speed to a snail's pace. Eventually... The devil? 
smashed into something. That's all I need. Oh, well, here it goes. Steed crawled from the car, groped his way to the bonnet, to find that the car radiator was hard up against a signpost. Steed, who was carrying a torch, shone the beam upwards and read, From this vantage point you have a breathtaking view of four counters. <laughs> I'll settle for a hand in front of my face. Steed limped back to the car with not the foggiest idea of where he was. Emma Peel, remembering the parting words of the young man she'd just thrown out of the house, went through into the dining room. The candles were gutting, but by their light, she could see that someone had been in the room. The place at the bottom end of the table had been used. There were the remains of food on the plate, a little wine in the glass, and a cigar butt smouldered in the ashtray. Mrs. Peel left the room rather hurriedly and made for her bedroom. At the top of the stairs, she paused. The revolving door now showed the playing card of the Joker facing outwards. So someone had gone through towards the bedrooms. Joker is right. Hmm. All right, whoever you are, I'll get ready for you. Mrs. Peel entered her room and found it normal and welcoming. She crossed to her suitcase and opened it, taking out a revolver. Fire first, ask questions later. I'm ready. <laughs> in the fog-shrouded garden, the young man stumbled through the bushes and stopped as he encountered Kula. Oh, how did you get on? I think I worried her. I really think I worried her. Just worried? Funniest caper I've ever been on. Why try to scare her to death? I've told you it's a joke, a practical joke. Well, take my word for it, that one doesn't scare easily. I've done my job. I want to be paid off. Of course. But you haven't finished yet. You have to scream first. Okay. I'll give you a real blood curdler. Ah! Ah, that good enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm afraid it isn't. I think we need the real thing. Don't you? Ula turned and looked over her shoulder. The bushes parted. The huge figure of a man loomed out of the fog. A large, hairy hand tightened its grip around a pistol. No! No! no. gives you a lot of pleasure. Now here's something you must do for him. Give him all new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete. New Procos contains all the energy-giving vitamins and protein a healthy dog needs. So with new Procos, you need feed him nothing else. New Procos health food is all he needs. Care for your dog. Give him new Procos health food for dogs. It's complete and he'll love it. There's just no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Gray of Durban has this to say. Uh, I can't even explain it. it. It astounded me. I was really and truly very astounded. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo. <laughs>